Hi everyone, my name's Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Form Live. Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday, live from East London. Today we're joined by Ski Oakenfall and the brand new push to deconstruct a French house classic. So today we are going to break down Stardust's music, Sounds Better With You, using the brand new Ableton Push and 9.5 software. And remember, if you want to learn more about sampling, sound design and all that good stuff, make sure you check out our courses on our website, pointblanklondon.com. And of course, we are completely live, so get your questions for Ski in the chat and we'll get to them throughout the broadcast. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Ski, welcome back. Hey, Another Declan. FFL. I know. Push so 2, very exciting. Very exciting indeed. We've done some videos on it, which most people have already seen, obviously. But yeah. Yeah. if you wanted to quickly give us an introduction to what's new, I mean, visually, the screen is obviously the biggest change, right? The screen is a big thing. The layout, there's some new buttons. Um, probably most importantly is this button here called the convert button, right. which uh, converts an audio clip to a simpler. Uh, and has a few other functions as well. Do you think um, that'll become not just simpler, but a few other things down the line, maybe? Um, possibly. Um, different stuff. It does have a, a, another function as well. Once you can actually convert the simpler, if, you, if you're in slicing mode uh -huh. and uh, you've got some slices going across your pad, you can then convert that into a drum rack later on. So yeah, I mean, okay. it might well have sort of uh, other applications as well in the future. Um, but obviously the screen just frees up uh, the workflow because you know, you can just access all the menu items so much, so much more quickly. So that's a big thing. Yeah. Um, but really the whole, you know, the biggest thing is just the sampling capability of it. Yeah. And I think it's something that was really missed with the Push 1. Um, it's just you no know, waveform manipulation. Um, I mean, ultimately, it is just an editor. It's editing what is going on in Ableton. Um, but it's, I mean, it's seamless, you know, it's, it's instantaneous. How they've done it <laughs> yeah. over a USB cable, I don't know. But There's the old cliche of not looking at the screen. I mean, genuinely, do you not have to look at the screen, do you feel? Um, much more so. Right. I mean, it takes me back in a way to, <laughs> ah, yes. takes me back to when I, when I was using an Akai S3000. Yeah, someone actually said that in one of the comments in our videos. Yeah. Exactly the same thing, yeah. Um, which is obviously yeah, very hands-on. You're not looking, you're, you know, you're looking at a little screen, but you're actually kind of, you know, getting the start and end points and really getting in there. Reacting to what's happening, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it really feels like that. So in some ways, it's kind of come full circle. Um, and but you've got the best of both worlds because you've got the software. You know the fact. I think as well that you can you can be working on this, but you're actually still working within the door. So you can get an idea together really quickly, but then you can actually go and finish it off. So, yeah. Um, cool. So Stardust. I mean, it's a classic. Absolute classic. It's a seminal. Yes, track. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> An overused term, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, yeah, I remember. I think it's, it's just one of those tracks that you remember when you first heard it, and you just think, "Wow, what was that?" And then. You hear it in a club and it's just, I don't know, it just sort of bridges so many different genres in a way, but it just, you know, I think it appeals to so many people. Yeah. Um, and I think the simplicity of it as well, you know, it, it came around that time, um, obviously a sort of big you know, French house, loads of stuff going on. Uh, Thomas Bangalter and Guy Mann both had their labels, uh, Roulang and Creedamore. And if you listen back to that catalogue, it really is all about finding disco loops. Yeah. And especially the Creedamore stuff, I mean, a lot of those releases are so raw, yeah. you know, and like a very underproduced. Often like clicking as a loop goes around, yeah, but it's yeah. just like that's part of the charm. Yeah, and it's why, in a, in a way, this is like the kind of track that came out of that, but then sort of blew up and became really commercial. But, you know, I mean, it came out on Roulet, didn't it? Uh, um, yeah, I don't yeah. actually know, but maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it came out on Roulet. Okay. Um, but yeah, brilliant track. I mean, it's the uh, story behind it, I think it's, they, they heard someone DJing the, the original track, which is Shaka Khan, Fate, and apparently someone looped it up in the club and they heard it, and then also uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Diamond was in there, he's the singer, and he started singing, singing something over it, and they were like, okay, let's get in the studio and let's record it. That may be completely wow. wrong, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I heard anyway. Um, so yeah, Shaka Khan, it's from this album, uh, What Are You Gonna Do For Me? Came out in 79, I think, 78, 79. Great kind of disco track, amazing production. Mm. And uh, I'm going to recreate the track. Cool. Um, so, unfortunately, I haven't got the vinyl of it. 
uh, ordered it, it didn't come in time. But I've got the <sighs> but audio. But you've still got it, I've got it for the weekend. You can imagine it, yeah, and you can see the, the, cover, the cover there. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's enough. So, should we just have a little listen to it? Yes. Um, and hopefully you can see the push screen, you can see the waveform. There you go. You've probably heard the loop. Yeah. Should we play it again? It's there. So, it's an audio clip at the moment. Um, I'm going to just dive straight in and press convert, and that's going to convert it to a simpler. Um, so, I'm going to do that now. Press convert. It's just asking me convert. Shaka Khan. Oh, 1981. Sorry, I was wrong. It wasn't the 70s. There we go. Post correcting you. That's how good it's, it is. It's so good. It's sort of intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> Recognizes release dates. <laughs> Amazing. So it's put it uh, into a simpler. Um, so I'm going to press note mode. I'm just going to check the scale to make sure we're in C. Yes, we are. Okay. And uh, <coughs> let's just press the device. There we go. So I'm just going to, I mean, I've got the whole track in here. So I'm just going to take the uh, end point uh, right up there and then the start point as well. There you go. So I'm going to zoom in now. Zooming is great. There we go, there's the start point. Zoom in a bit more. Oops. It kind of starts on the off beat, doesn't it? Dun, 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 dun. I think it's the mm. start of the bar. Yeah, but uh, okay, let's just get the. Oh, let's get the. That's one thing actually I've found is like you sometimes you you uh, you're twiddling the wrong knob because <laughs> your hand is over. Yeah. yeah. So let's just get the end point now. There we go. Zoom in a bit more. So now I'm going to sort of really try to get uh, tight in with the the transient there, start of the uh, just that kick. There we go. And likewise with the end as well, the end point. There we go. So we've got the loop. Seamless. Seamless, yeah. And it's automatically looped it. Uh, this, is, this is the classic mode. Um, so if I zoom out again, uh, so now I'm going to, if I just uh, press sample here, this t takes me into the edit mode and I've got all the different functions, global, envelopes, warp, everything. So I'm going to go straight into warp mode, turn warping on and then warp as one bar. There we go. And it's basically warped it to tempo, which is I've got it as 124, which I think is the original, original mm -hmm. tempo of the track. Now, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if you can see just with the, the grids here, but this uh, loop, the one bar loop, is kind of a bit out of time with itself. So the first, the, the, the rim shot uh, on beat two is slightly ahead of the beat. And there's a little bit of flamming as well on, on the fourth beat as well. So. I'm gonna, I know I'm going to run into problems if I, if I loop that up um, and then start, you know, if I then add a beat, I'm probably going to get flamming if mm -hmm. I just keep it as it is. Um, if, I was, if I was having this as an audio clip, I'd probably go in and do some warping. But we can take a different approach now because we're in simpler. And uh, I'm going to use <coughs> the slice mode for this. And I'm going to basically slice it across some pads and then kind of try to get it in time and working like that. So. If I go over to main here and I go over to the mode and I just go on to slicing and you can see it's, all, it's put it across some pads for me here. Um, one of the functions I really like is pad slicing mode and that basically allows you to set the slices yourself kind of manually in real time. So what I need to do, I mean it's, it's already, I've got this 100% sensitivity so it's already kind of sliced it up but I want to make it kind of just basically put it into eighths. So I'm going to turn uh, or put the sensitivity down to zero. Mm -hmm. So there are no slices now. I put pad, pad slicing on. And uh, what we do, it's now just got this sample just on this one pad here, is if I just then kind of hit the available pads as it's playing, it will just create those slices. So I'm going to do that now. There we go. So I've put that into eight. So we've now got... So we can do some great kind of just, you know, little kind of mm. uh, interesting rhythmic things with that. So um, now the point of this is to uh, get it so that the 
kicks and the rim shot are just kind of like bang on, they're really tight. So in order to do that, I just need to go in and uh, just basically do some nudging to nudge the start points of those. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what's going on. First one's fine, this is fine. But then this one, I need to nudge back so I just get that rim shot bang on. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. This I can just nudge a little bit this way. Oops. I think it's just it's just created a new one for me. I don't want that one there. There we go. So that's working pretty well. And um, now I'm actually just going to record that in. Um, it's not going to be perfect, but we're going to we're going to sort of carry on working with that. So let's just put the metronome and just record that in. So you can hear it's not that smooth at the yeah. moment. So what we need to do now is go to change the playback mode. It's in mono mode at the moment, but if I just go to through, then what that's doing is it's like from, from the point of the slice, it will play through the sample. So, right. you see what I mean? So if Until I now, it's interrupted by the next MIDI note. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So if I press play now. Now, we've got a bit of flamming going on there. So this is where we just need to just kind of just mess around with the nudge nudge a little bit. There you go, that's a bit better. <coughs> cool, so that's working well. I'm also going to just have a look at the actual warp mode as well. Um, I guess sometimes it's just a case of playing around and I did have a look at this earlier and I found that going to texture mode and increasing the grain size and the flux just gives it that somehow sound yeah yeah and just makes it kind of flow a bit better so the next thing to do is to transpose it because uh, it's actually transposed up a semitone uh, there we go and I'm just going to detune it a little bit as well and sense as well there we go. So we've got our loop and uh, that's nicely in time. So next thing I'm going to look at is uh, <coughs> actually some kind of effects on this. Um, pretty sure they use uh, uh, SP1200 for this. Classic Alan Brax machine. Alan Brax machine, 12-bit, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. So we can use the Redux for this to kind of like bring down <coughs> the, sort of, you know, the bit reduction and just make it sound a bit kind of grittier. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, to, going to filter off some of the bottom end because we don't really need that and we're going to put a bass line underneath it as well so we want to create some space for that. So um, sticking all in push, I'm going to try, this, try doing this without, without touching the screen. So uh, we're going to go to add device and we're going to go down to our audio effects and let's just put an EQ3 on this. There we go. And let's just take off the low end. There we go. Next thing I'm going to do is um, mono up a little bit. It's very stereo. The guitar mm -hmm. is very much over on the right hand side, although I'm kind of not sitting in front of the speakers at the moment. But uh, so we're going to add another device. We're just going to go for the utility. Let's go down right to the bottom. It's so much quicker, the browsing now. Mm. Definitely loving that. Um, just going to stereo, stereo separation. That's fully monoed. Maybe just. Keep it, give it a little bit of stereo, a little bit of width. Next thing I want to do is um, add some compression. I just want to try and bring down those, those transients. I still think there might be an issue with the, the rim shot when it's mixed with, a, with the kick and the snare. So I just want to try and bring that down a bit. So I'm just going to uh, add a compressor. There we go. And the great thing of this, it's like you're you know, you've only got the controls here. You're not actually uh, looking at the compressor, you know, itself. So it's, you know, you're kind of it's making you use your, ears, use your ears, definitely. So I'm just going into just pressing this compressor button here, so I can go into the edit controls, take off the make, uh, take off the makeup, um, take off my makeup. Well, I'm not actually wearing any makeup. <laughs> Sorry, that's so weak, isn't it? Um, that's all right. Yeah. Take down the threshold. Take down the attack, and then increase the output gain. 
Can you hear that springing down that transient there? Might be too yeah. much, but I think that's probably enough for the moment. Okay, um, I'm just going to go to the mix actually, just sort of check the level. I can probably bring that up a little bit. Output gain. Cool, right. Now for the SP 1200 ness Let's go to audio effects again and go to Redux. There we go. Never know how to pronounce it. Is it Redux or Redux? What I, do you say? I say Redux, but you know. Redux. Yeah, I think it's the sort of Redux, I don't know, whatever. Um, okay, so let's put the bit depth on and take that down to 12. And then there we go. sample mode. And here we go. Are you ready for this? Yeah, extreme. Extreme. Yeah. And last but not least, number five, bit of uh, phase, phaser. So let's uh, add a bit of that. Uh, I suppose Ableton wasn't, was Ableton around at this time? It must have been. 98. 98, yeah. Mm. To know. Yeah. Was it, guys? Someone tell us. Someone tell us. We should know that, really. We should know that. Yeah, we should know. We I think it school. was '99. I think, but anyway. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, actually, you know, I don't want to compress it all. Or phaser. Here we go. Now, I just read that interview with uh, Thomas Bangalter saying that he really loved Ableton and was yeah. using a lot of the effects. You know. uh, <coughs> right. This needs a little bit more tweaking than the other ones. So let's just go into phaser here. Okay, so we're on we're on a hundred percent wetness at the moment. So let's take the LFO phase down, sensor type space, going to space, take up the LFO frequency. Oh, I need to put the LFO amount. Obviously, that's far too fast. Isn't it? Right, let's just mess with the frequency and the feedback now. So now if I just dial off the wetness, so it's going, maybe, maybe half is fine. Yeah. Maybe a bit more. Music Hub Q says it was 99 when Ableton came out. Okay. So just a year behind. Okay. Okay, so we've got our loop. I think that's working pretty well. Yeah. Now Sounds we good. should uh, add a beat. Um, now this is just uh, a kick and snare, um, basically, because the, the hi-hats are all coming from the original, original loop. Right. So um, I've got a loop that I'm just a sort of standard house loop that I'm going to load up. Uh, so I just, did, I just clicked on add track there. So I'm just gonna go down here, uh, find, there we go. Just gonna use that, just load it in. Again, you saw the preview, preview mode there, something we didn't have before. It means you can just go through your sample library, um, auditioning sounds, loops, patches. It's just fantastic, you know. So uh, it's loaded it in, it's put it straight into a simpler. Um, so we're going to hit our, oh no, we don't need to hit convert because we're already in simpler. So we just need to go into the edit mode again. Um, let's just go straight for slicing and uh, hit the mode there. So I think these two are fine. Uh, you can hear there's just on the, the tail of that, there's just, it's just a tiny bit of the hi-hat. Yeah. So all we need to do is just, just to zoom in and just nudge that so that the start point is that way and then it's not there anymore. And if you're really listening hard, you can hear a, a hi-hat, very like sort of faint hi-hat. And we can actually uh, lose a bit of that by going to the envelope and just uh, increasing the fade out. If I did it really extreme, you can see we've just got that first kind of transient and then yeah. there we go. So I'm just going to bring that down a bit. It's a bit loud at the moment. So let's just play along. In fact, I'm just going to go back here and just mute the original. There we go. By the way, I'm on, I'm on auto quantize here, so it's quantizing it all. So I think that's 
it's mixing pretty well with the loop. I think the loop's kind of fitting, fitting pretty well with that. Um, okay, so next thing to add is the bass line. Um, but before we do that, uh, I just want to sort of have a quick chat about the chords and what's going on. Um, EMC. Bit side of EMC, of bit of, yeah, bit of theory, you know, worth checking out. Even, even with this, which is just a loop, you know, the interesting thing is the bass line um, is, something just fell off, fell off down there, I'm not sure it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, is it still Halloween? I don't know. No. No. No, we're all right. <laughs> the, uh, the bass line, there are two chords. All right, let me just, let me just do this because it's just like, I, I don't need, I don't need shaka anymore, unfortunately. Um, here we go, we've got the chords written there and the keyboard. There we go. And any luck, yeah, we've got, we've got a road sound as well. So we're in A minor. I'm sure I've done lots of deconstructions that are in A minor. It's very simple. No, no, no sharps or flats. Yep. Um, and from this loop, there are two chords, and they are, which is this one here, which is an E minor seven, but I'm it's played in the second inversion. So this is the root ver root position, first inversion, second inversion. And then this is, uh, it is actually F major seven, but in the right hand, I'm just playing an A minor with a F in the bass. So the main bass line is going, stepping up. So E, F, G, A. Yeah. So it means you get this really interesting chord here, which is like an E minor seven over G, and then back to the root chord, the one chord which is A minor. Um, we'll hear how it sounds in a minute. So that's the, that's the sort of the main verse, the instrumental section. And then when the vocal comes in, the bass line actually starts on the D and then steps up from the D. So we get some really interesting chords going on here. Get that one, which is yeah, <laughs> E minor seven over, with the D in the bass. Then you get this A over, over E. And again, this one, which is a bit of a clash, but when in the kind of context of the, the track, it doesn't really clash. And then it, then it finishes off on, on this one here, which is uh, A minor over G. So there's a kind of suspension there, which feels like it's going to go right back there. So um, let's just <coughs> play that with the bass. Um, I'm just going to put the scale to A minor. We're in in key mode here. So if we just go for the verse section. Should we record it in? Yes. And I'm pressing new, which if I just, I'll, I'll keep those open for a moment, those chords. This is now the chorus section. Two sections now. Oh, oh dear. Get rid of that. Mute the original. There we go. We've got the a cappella as well. There we go. So this is over this chorus section now. That E is almost like almost out. But it kind of is it the leaves you hanging? Is it this one? You mean the Actually, last? Actually, I think they all are. Because they all the are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It kind of creates that kind of like anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's another part as well, which we were talking about before, is uh, which I'm hearing as a string part. But you were saying it could be the kind of transient of the of the guitar. The guitar sample. Yeah. Sampled again. Yeah. Yeah. Up, yeah. So and that goes over this verse section. Um, so I'm just going to I'm just going to duplicate that scene, um, and let's just bring up a string sound here. Now for this, uh, I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, for this string, I'm actually using contact session strings, which is really nice. Um, there we go. Use this a lot. And uh, I've got it going through a phaser, and I've just filtered off some of the bottom end as well. Um, 
To make this sound a bit fatter, I'm actually going to use the chord MIDI device uh, to play an octave above as well. So uh, I can just do that from here. Uh, if I just go to the MIDI effects, there we go, chord device, load, and then just shift this first one up, 12 semitones. In. Right. Go back to this. So they they are the main musical sections. Yeah, it's it's because there's no. There's no verse or chorus or bridge. I mean, there's one breakdown with the kick. Exactly. It's just the same do, thing. Do, do, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a filtered bit. It's simplicity at its best. Well, you mentioned filtering. Yes. And one of the new things uh, with 9.5 filters. Yeah, the new filters, filter circuits. Um, so, yeah, we've got, there's four new filter circuits. Yeah. Um, just there's this OSR, which I think is based on the on Oscar mm -hmm. circuitry. There's the MS2, which is based on Salon Key. I personally don't know what that is. It's some kind of Japanese monosynth filter. I thought it would be the MS20 with that name. Yeah. It's got to yeah. be. You're right. Yeah. You've cracked it. <laughs> <laughs> cracked, cracked the Why did I think of that? <laughs> you know your synths, don't you? You know your Japanese rare monosynths anyway. Yeah, um, that's all I know. Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing to only know. Uh, uh, yeah, SMP, um, it says here, not based on any particular hardware. Um, and then the PRD, Moog Prodigy. So uh, what I'm going to do is put these on just on the master output and just have a play around yeah, to yeah. get that that's classic. French filter sound. I always thought the auto filter was a little bit weak. Yeah, you did, honest, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, I always, I mean, I used it loads, but um, the thing we've got now is this drive, which is yeah. really kind of adds distortion. It's great. So I'm just going to mix mode here uh, into master um, and add device. Go down to audio effects. There we go, auto filter. There we go, so it defaults to the clean mode. Which we don't like. No. no. So let's choose the Oscar. Add some drive. Works better. Crank up the resonance. Are you ready? I actually get the vocal in here. We try some of the other ones. Try the MS20. So you've also got this. You can go it above 100%. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. So you can do like uh, self oscillation. Self, yeah. Which is, I haven't tried it out yet, but seeing as this is available in operator, it means you can get those kind of like laser, lasery sounds. In yeah, fact, maybe yeah. I should do that as I'm going to next uh, uh, FFL, just creating that kind of sound. So there isn't like a vast difference, it doesn't like instantly change in tone when you swap modes, but... No, it's a subtle thing, so, yeah. yeah, but I, I just, for me it's like just as an effect, you know, if I, if I just mute that, it's like a kind of mastering device, you know, yeah. it really kind that of drive warms, has been yeah, a lot. yeah, really warms it up and um, I could imagine using this on, uh, just for beats actually, so you know, actually kind of having, you know, you'd have your main beat and then you'd, ha you'd duplicate that beat uh, on another channel and add some of this filter and just have that kind of underneath. And I think that would really kind of add some drive to it and fatten it up. It'd be like sort of parallel compression in a way, but just like, you know, giving yeah, that real kind of fatness. Um, so yeah, there you go. There's the deconstruction. Cool. And using, I mean, I, I, you know, I was, I was kind of like shooting over a little bit to the screen, but that was more just to show things, but pretty much it's just everything from push two. And I think that's the big thing about it, you know, now is it's really is kind of hands on, you know, you really can kind of get quite far um, with your track without looking at the screen. Yeah, nice. And we've got plenty of questions coming in. Okay. Uh, Danny Digital is asking, has Simpler become more useful than Sampler now? Or will we see these updates in Sampler? The, 
as far as I'm aware, and I'm like 99.99% sure, sam sampler is exactly the same. It's got exactly the same functionality as simpler. It's just that uh, it's when you hit convert, the default thing is going into simpler. Um, but at the moment, there's not. I don't think it gives you the the, the opportunity to convert a simpler to sampler from push, but you can certainly yeah. do it from here. So yeah, it's got the same functionality. Um, is it as simple as this is a sort of incredibly powerful device because it's used it's used in drum racks. Right. So on you know if you're if you're playing uh, drum samples, it's it's you know every pad has effectively got a simpler on it. So um, it's I suppose it's just sort of the, yeah, it's obviously the simplest form of the sampler, but it's incredibly powerful. The only thing that sampler gives you is uh, you know you can have multi zones and right. you can multi layering as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, Demigods Ableton Tutorials is asking to clarify why you split it into eighths at the start instead of just using the sample. Instead of using just the sort of the one shot mode or the loop. Yeah, why you? The reason I mean, it, it was to a form of warping, wasn't it? It's well, yeah. The the, the main thing was is that it, the the loop within itself is a bit out of time. I mean, obviously, it's a live it's a live track. You know, yeah. they were, might be playing to a click, but it's live musicians. So. Uh, and I was just, I was, I mean, I tried it out before, and I knew that when, if I just made it as a loop, well, as soon as I added a kick and a snare, it was going to start flamming. Right. So it just gave me the opportunity. It's a bit, it was a, sort of another way of warping in a way, but it, using using the simpler. Yeah, cool. Um, and Mr. Simon's asking, can you transpose individual slices, or is that a limitation of slice mode? Uh, that's a limitation, right. but you can convert, once you're kind of happy with the size, you could then convert it into a drum rack. And then once it's in a drum rack, then you could do that because you've effectively got a simpler on each drum rack, which you could then change the, change the pitch of. Yeah, for sure. Someone's asking if we can convert the original Shaka sample in simpler to a drum rack and make it downloadable. Don't ask for much, do they? Wow, <laughs> man. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. See what we can do, yeah. That's illegal, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, is it now possible to save Ableton templates with the 9.5 update and push to? I guess save templates from the device, I think. Is that what it is? From the device? I don't know. GCTV is asking that. Yeah, but, um, I'm sure to look into that one. Yeah, we'll look into that one for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, are all drum parts tuned to the key of the track? You didn't tune those drums, did you? No. No. No, no. You probably should, but you know, it's just for the purposes of this, it's fine. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know, like tuning, tuning drums. I just don't. I don't know. Maybe you, you do that more. I yeah, don't. I don't I do. tune drums that much. Controversial. Yeah, controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a whole if other it, episode. It, and actually, it, yeah. we just had a tutorial with Icicle. Uh, so if you're interested in tuning drums, make sure you check out those two videos. And okay. the third one is coming next week. But the questions are flying in. Unfortunately, we are out of time for today's FFL. Hopefully you got plenty of inspiration for the weekend. And remember, if you want to find out more about sampling and sound design, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. And we'll be back next week for another FFL. So we'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>